Before we talk COVID, I want to give you an update on approaching Tropical Storm Eta. It's a wet one and it's big. There isn't an expectation that it will become a hurricane, but as of Friday early afternoon, its path was headed in our direction. In fact, it's possible we will be on the east side of the storm, what is commonly called the dirty side, because it gets more wind and rain and gusts, and some gusts can reach hurricane intensity. It is anticipated to impact our area as early as Sunday morning. Now, as we all know, conditions can change, so please follow the news over the weekend. Etta has delivered well in excess of 10 inches of rain in other places. So we are deploying temporary generators to select pump station locations and sending pumps to higher risk areas and locations where we have not yet done flooding remediation. Now we're also cleaning out our stormwater drains to get rid of obstructions and are opening our garages for you to park your cars to avoid flood damage. For those of you who want sandbags, we will be distributing them tomorrow, Saturday, at the Public Works Yard behind the fire station on Dade Boulevard, with a maximum of six bags per car. Hours will be from sunrise to 7.30 in the evening, so that those in our observant Jewish community have an opportunity to get bags after sunset. All this is subject to modification, based, of course, on changing conditions, so please, Check the city website for up-to-date information or look for updates in your email or on the news. Please be prepared. So let's talk COVID-19. There is a lot to talk about. First, this morning, Friday, November 6th, the State Department of Health has reported that COVID-19 cases in Miami-Dade County surpassed 189,000 and 3,670 people in our county have succumbed to the virus. Here is what is going on. It's pretty evident that we are seeing some significant spread of the virus. So let me try to put it all in perspective. First, we've seen a very noticeable increase in positive cases. We have now had three days this week of over a thousand infections each day in Miami-Dade. A few weeks ago, it had been well under 500 most days. We have not really seen thousand infection days since August. But remember, in the midst of the surge, we were seeing well over 3,000 on some days. So while our numbers today are still less than we had during the summer surge, they are still very concerning, particularly because of the significant upward trend. Now, second, the county hospitalizations and positivity percentage are following this same trend. You can see hospitalizations in Dade have seen recent days with 71 and 65 residents requiring hospital care much higher than a few weeks ago when it was generally below 50. Also, our percentage of positive infections has now regularly passed 6%. So there are more people infected, more people requiring hospitalization because of the virus, and it's all going up. Now, I usually don't talk about just Miami Beach numbers because we simply have too much interaction with the rest of the county, between workers and visitors and our own commuters. It is just usually too small an area to extract usable trend lines. But I want to take a moment to alert you to what is happening on our little island because recently things have changed a bit. First, the daily positivity cases in our city are usually too volatile to track. And if you look at the last 14 days, you can see what I mean. But it's clear there is more virus here. Of greater concern is a report I received from Mount Sinai which cares for COVID patients from our city and from throughout the county. Now, for most of the pandemic, Mount Sinai's COVID patient census was composed of about 20% city residents with the remainder of patients coming from other parts of the county or elsewhere. Yesterday, Steve Sonenreich, the CEO of the hospital, let me know that over the last week or so, the percentage of Miami Beach residents being treated has doubled. Now, this doesn't mean Mount Sinai can't handle COVID patients, but it is a clear signal that there is more spread of the virus in our community, especially to people who might be more vulnerable and need to be hospitalized. Now, according to DOH, Miami Beach, a community of 92,000, has had around 4,000 COVID infections. DOH also advised me yesterday that of those infected, 59 of our residents have died. 
I give you this information because candidly, so many people from other places, tourists, visitors, workers, come to our city and we have been urging them to wear masks and exercise social distancing. But clearly our own residents are not immune and we need to be more careful. Too many of us are in the hospital and so many have died. So wear your masks, please wear your masks to keep yourself and your loved ones safe. And stay alert this weekend, it's going to be wet. Thanks for your patience, your calm and sacrifice. Stay healthy and mostly at home.